So when you're building a really exciting uh, coral reef aquarium with a neat sump and an awaki pump and a cool chiller and some really slick lights, how do you top it, huh? You come back for part two, LA Fish Guys. Okay, so we're doing the plumbing and got the sump put in there. We've got um, a power strip that we've kind of run all the electrical over to this side here where we'll mount it on the back of the wall. Um, and then I think we also bought some little plugs to cap the unused uh, outlets there. So, uh, But we've kind of run into a, another little snag. We're dealing with an existing cabinet and everything is made to fit and what we have here is an issue with getting the cup for the protein skimmer in and out without having to either empty half the cup inside the, the sump maybe into a cup or something which may end up being the way to go um, try to tap a hole on the side of that acrylic and put a barb fitting in there and uh, run a drain hose off to the side well I don't have any room on the front so um, and it's already a custom protein skimmer anyhow not that it was made for this job but uh, it appeared to work for the job but um, so any th 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 thoughts there Slick? Well I think the uh, only thought is um, just draining the cup into a cat cup into another cup and then taking it out that way yep, like a butter container yeah butter well, container. and 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 the reality is this and if you'll just step back for a second there this tank has an algae scrubber on there which should r replace the total need for a protein skimmer anyhow and if the algae scrubber is doing its job it'll certainly lessen what the protein skimmer has to drive out so um, I guess one of those things I'll worry about as I uh, get to it part of the uh, trick of doing a custom installation. Um, so, I think the next step after he gets the uh, sump positioned is uh, hooking up that to the chiller. So Scott's in the process of hooking up the uh, Iwaki water pump. It'll draw water from the sump down here. It'll then discharge its water over to that refrigeration unit and then that in turn will come back up to the underside of the tank where the return line is inside the internal overflow and it'll discharge there which in turn fills up the tank that spills into watch your hand there that spills into the internal overflow which has a uh, called a Durzo standpipe inside there just basically is a pseudo siphon arrangement that uh, allows the water to exit the tank quietly and that water in turn will then come down through the bottom of the tank uh, on the underside will be this uh, flex drain hose here uh, and then the elbow and the cover are for the top of the sump which the water in turn will pass through that micron sock which was part of the decision in how we position the um, the sump itself. I kind of wanted that sock to the back side leaving the the sump open to me but the reality is I need to get into that sock when I service the tank and so it kind of behooves me to have it uh, here up front. Uh, as we mentioned there's a, a protein skimmer in there. Um, it's an old Euro Reef skimmer made for the jelly aquariums and I say made as in specifically um, 18 inches tall but also as you saw there's going to be an issue getting the cup itself out uh, of that sump so that'll be an interesting challenge um, the hog style algae scrubber uh, which will be driven by an air pump 
and uh, ultimately the uh, algae scrubber is going to be the main line of filtration, for lack of a better description. Uh, I mean, aside from the lye rock itself, uh, that'll be the source of nutrients uh, being taken up. Um, so, here in a second, Scott is going to uh, connect the drain line to the underside of the tank. Scott has done is taken the end of the uh, drain hose, which is kind of a, a cuff arrangement, it's the adapter for lack of a better description, and uh, he has immersed the end of that hose in some hot water, and he's now in the process of tightening the end of the hose to the bulkhead. Access. Voila. So you are, uh, Dismantling the components of your sculpture, and you are getting ready to put it back together. Reassembling them inside. Okay, so Condi is uh, starting to put some of the rock work into the tank, and one of the things that I've asked them to do this time, seeing as how this is a glass tank, <clears throat> is to place <clears throat> uh, what's typically called egg crate panel uh, at the bottom. Um, where the rock would rest on the tank. Part of it is just to minimize the uh, potential for the rock having some issue with the glass tank. Um, the other part of it is the egg crate gives a little bit of um, dispersion as far as the weight of the rock across the bottom of the tank, uh, but at the same time it also gives the, the rock a place to kind of grab a hold of, for lack of a better description, yeah. uh, so it doesn't slide on the glass. Uh, I don't have the sand to put into the tank today, uh, so wherever the rock sits, uh, it's going to be um, sitting on its own accord, not, not uh, being supported by sand or anything like that. So once again, that's where the egg crate panel comes in. Uh, as you can see earlier, he uh, created a sculpture with a various arrangements of pins and such and assuming that he remembers how it goes back together um, I was hoping actually you got a picture of it <laughs> okay so Scott is coming along on securing the tubing that'll deal with the uh, chiller and Condi has progressed quite a bit uh, done already. on the rock about? work as you saw previously the rocks have a series of holes and pins drilled and positioned into them. This allows for a very open, spacious, and precarious looking live rock sculpture customized specifically for this tank. I'm, not, I'm already counting on watching a lot less TV. <laughs> Okay, so he's got the tubing on the discharge side of the pump, which rises up there and then exits out of the cabinet. It in turn goes over to the chiller. And then the return line from that chiller comes across and then goes to that return on the underside of the tank. On the back side, he's got the power strips mounted, and you'll be very pleased to know that he used the um, existing holes on the power strip uh, to attach to the screws on the wall got more patience in setting it up than I do. Uh, you can see there's the controllers for the J-BOAs. 
um, the alternating um, uh, internal pumps for the tank and there's the timer for the algae scrubber of course there's also the uh, main plug for the uh, Iwaki water pump okay, so here's a view from up above looking at the rock work in the tank How is the egg crate stuff would be covered up with the sand, yeah. so you won't even see that. Actually, I'm still in that idea of wrong, you know? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't using the egg crate before, you know? And, uh, on one of the last ones that I had, there's some fish that basically uh, create homes underneath the rock. And they grab the sand, so what, they, what they'll start doing is taking the sand, taking the sand, before you know it, it's up like this, and you get all the sand. So he's working on the air supply for the algae, the hog algae scrubber. You see that's the scrubber, at least the uh, the dry half yeah, he's sitting got, there. It's got uh, dual lines coming out of there, so I'll just make them long. Oh, okay, okay. Alright, so we're ready to hook up the chiller now. As you know, I'm a big proponent of algae scrubbers, and I can't stress enough adding it now as opposed to waiting for algaes to become a problem. But in addition, it was so simple to install. It took Scott less than five minutes to do so. And as Scott goes through and double checks his plumbing, its electrical and water connections, we find ourselves at the point just prior to adding salt water to the tank. So we've got 100 gallons of uh, salt water already made up with that purified uh, reverse osmosis DI unit at home. And we've got a hose run here from the van to the uh, tank. So we're going to go through and do a run through on the plumbing to make sure everything is uh, connected as it's supposed to and then we'll go ahead and uh, turn it on. The water flow that is. And then we'll turn the tank on. And then we'll turn you on. Do you want to stir things up in your tank? Create some rock and roll? Make your corals do the hula hula? Internal circulation is the movement of water within the tank. Increasing water flow inside the tank helps flush and sweep up debris. It entices corals to open fuller with greater polyp extension. Fish respond naturally and move gracefully in the variable currents. Jibo wave maker pumps can do this. Four models, inexpensive to obtain, easy to install, internal pumps magnetically grasp the sides of your tank, and each or all units have five effect settings along with separate speed and power controls. Or check out the advanced LED systems at affordable prices. Reef Breeders has a two-year warranty on lights along with DC pumps, dosing pumps, and protein skimmers. That's ReefBreeders.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, 
marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. So the tank's beginning to fill up with water, and uh, we've just started uh, with the lights. They're plugged in, and Scott is now figuring out how to uh, program. These are uh, LED lights from Reef Breeders. There's two units up here, and they'll be set up to uh, work together so that as one makes certain changes, it'll just have the other one duplicate them. And as you can see, the tank is filling up with water. Alright, so we're just about filled up with water. It'll be spilling over the teeth here in just a moment. I had this nice little acrylic uh, lighting support made to elevate the uh, LED lights up off the top of the uh, tank. And water is now spilling into the internal overflow. Once that water level rises to the top of the Durzo, it'll create a pseudo siphon. And then it'll start going down into the uh, sump below. No, not yet. We may have cut that Durzo a little too short. Hopefully that's not the noise we're going to hear. Well, you don't have a cover over it here. Yeah, we've got you water now. You don't have over it either. Coming down into... Uh... I'll wait till you turn that pump on and hear that roar coming out of there. Probably should have left it at the height that was. Yeah. The skimmer's going to lift here up so. here in a moment. On the... Uh... Yeah, well, if the pump ends up being too strong, then I'll end up putting a ball valve in there. Please worry about the noise, but I don't think noise is going to be an issue once you have the lid on the overflow and the canopy on there. I think we just cut the Durzo too short. So it's you too much of a can, drop. You couldn't make it too much longer either because you've got the elbow in there for the return. Yeah. So, how far up is the water in the skimmer? Well, it's catching up. There it goes. There it goes. Your skimmer's not going anywhere now. Look at the cup. I would consider... Shut the water off. Shut the water off. It's not primed yet. Unplug it and plug it back in. Oh, that elbow you've got in there is pointing down, so it's got air trapped in the... Uh, Unplug the pump. Unplug the pump. I did. Now reach in there where that elbow is on that bulkhead. Okay. With the Awaki water pump now primed, the aquarium begins to come alive. Scott turns on the internal Jboa pumps and Condi adjusts them heightwise within the aquarium. Can't go up too much higher. And I don't want to come up higher. All right, let's do a power out test. That other one, you're going to want to move it up, I'm afraid, but it should be good. We're doing a power out test. Mark that sump level with the tape when we're done, too. Let's see how this goes. A power out test is done by unplugging the main water pump and allowing the water levels to drain and settle. Since I try not to use check valves, this is an important step to ensure that the filter itself won't overflow in the case of a power outage. Sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll do a double check on our bulkhead. I didn't bother to check down there. But... Ah, it's all. 
expect any leaks. Jim, notice how I have this lid underneath? Mm -hmm. That's the way you're going to want to run it because what happens the is the hose wants to pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, just I figured that's safer, you know, right, right. that way it doesn't want to do this. So. Right. Kind of just go at it like that. And it goes in. Go back on. Alright, I think we're done with water. Alright, let's push the skin and not do it. There's a lot of fog in here. Awful lot of air. You don't need that much air going into that algae scrubber, I'm assuming, right? Let, uh, there's no con. Yeah, you turn the algae scrubber all the way up. The air all the way up? Yeah. Okay. A lot of air, but okay, no better than I do with that thing. Um, what's up with the skimmer? Why is the skimmer not running? It's not plugged in. I'm going to suggest that you just take the cup off of that thing and let it run without the cup right now so it can break in. Right. That way it doesn't overflow on you. I mean, it's going to make a mess of air bubbles in there, but then again, what do you think, Connie? Let the skimmer run or not run? Let this, uh, not uh, I mean, because it's already foaming up a lot. I mean, I don't, where's the adjustment on that skimmer? What do you do? Raise this? Yeah. Raise the discharge sponge. Well, it's all the way lower it. It's all the way yeah. down, right? I would even like a little bit more. Okay, show me what. Uh, so up here we have a uh, readout of display. Yep. Channel one is our blue channel. Channel two is the white channel. Um, right now I've kind of got more of a blue. I go back in here. Moonlight, uh, sun, and you know. all right. So that's the sunny mode right now. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll program a sunrise, sunset in here, but essentially we can, you know, shift our blue channel and our white channel here. If I increase channel two, it makes it wider versus decrease it and make it lower. I had a 80, 60% on the blue, 60% on the white. What we don't want to do is go too high because the lights are very powerful and when they start adding corals to this tank, if the intensity is up too high, Inevitably, they'll start running into issues with the corals acclimating to the light. So, um, I mean, really, we could go down on the intensity right now as well. No point in using extra power since you don't have a bunch of corals, but... The LED uh, lighting we'll enclosures we selected for this tank are the Reef Breeders Photon Series. They provide a variety of light, including the red and green spectrums, but have been broke down into two basic channels of light, what we'll call the white and the blue channel, of which both channels are intensity adjustable. And Scott is using the included remote control to create those settings. Along with the Reef Breeders Photon LED light enclosures, we're also using the JBOA internal water pumps. These have independent controllers allowing for a variety of flow patterns within the aquarium. Nice refresh that alternates. All right, so we've got, uh, we're testing the uh, JBOA pumps. This one seems to have a little bit of a snag. Not anymore. Not anymore, okay, good. And there's a number of different settings. Uh, what'd you call it, reef crest, and blast the you-know-what out of the rock ver crest, and I guess we'll end up having to learn. All right, well, here, I'm getting them going away here in a second here. See what happens. And with the tank full of salt water, the system running, and the LED lights positioned and programmed, it's now time to crown the aquarium with its canopy. And in advance, I know the cabinet guy made his own changes to the canopy. Ooh. Okay, I officially do not like your cabinet guy. Um, did we calculate enough height for that? That's an easy fix. 
with an easy fix. The reality is you're only going to get an inch, but that's all you really need. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, but you're going to have an issue getting the lights out of there with much more space. Yeah, that is an easy fix. Got to unscrew those shoulders. Yeah, that's an easy fix. The issue that I have is you've only got yeah. an inch there, and it doesn't give you much room to get. No, all we got to do is come down three quarters there, so. So that's an easy fix. You have it if you don't. So need we it, uh, right? got the canopy on, and um, once again, our uh, cabinet guy didn't pay any instructions to the uh, drawings I did, and there's a a whole inch worth of. Gap occurring there. Pay attention there. to the instructions, Jim. You said he didn't pay any instructions. Uh, anyhow, um, that's what it looks like with the canopy on. This being my first time with the LED lights on, that I can actually see the varied and uniqueness of the live rock sculpture that Condi has created. There are rocks and shelves that seem to float unsupported in the middle of the tank. Certainly plenty of room to place and epoxy many varied corals. Once I bring in the live sand, it will cover up the egg crate skid and grids at the bottom, along with defining the bottom of the ocean, or in this case, the bottom of the tank. <laughs> It's the Three Stooges from L.A. Fish Guys. <laughs> so that's the setup of the 130-gallon glass reef tank. Hopefully you learned something out of it. We've got a great aquascape inside there. We've got awesome plumbing. And so until there's a leak or we come to do the sand in the tank, always keep moving forward.